News for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, musers? John with Muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in today's video tutorial, we're going to work a bit more with the responsive composition widget. So, since it was released on August 22nd, I've been working quite a bit with it uh, to create different examples and to showcase the power of the responsive composition widget. Uh, so, it is available in the latest version of Adobe Muse, which is now Adobe Muse 2017.1. So here I have the website we'll be recreating. Uh, it's a dessert, dessert website. So we have a few images of desserts. And here I have the composition widget. So here when I hover over any of these words, the image changes. So I thought this was a really nice effect. It can create a really nice slideshow and showcase content in a really nice way. So when I hover over any of these words, the image changes. And I can also link these words to an internal page external page or anchor point. So here, if I click on any of the words, um, I've linked it to museforyoushop.com, so it takes me to that page. So any of these words, I click, and it takes me to uh, an external page. You can also link it to internal pages as well. So I actually got inspired for this idea um, off a website on awards.com. It's a-w-w-w-a-r-d-s.com, and I'll leave a link in the description area below. Um, but basically here we have the site and I was looking through and hovering over these words and I was seeing that the image was changing and I wanted to recreate this in Adobe Muse. So that gave me the idea. And also if you click on any of these words, it'll take you to a different page. And they have content in here as well, which you can do with the responsive composition widget. You can add an image and add content in the targets uh, to create this effect. I created a few other uh, examples as well. Here we have the composition widget on a black background with images that also have a black background. So we have this interesting effect where the image changes and uh, we just see the image because both the background and the image background are black. And the last example here, uh, these images I got from pixelbuddha.net and I'll leave a link in the description area below. So I hover over the words and the image changes and we also have content in the lower right hand corner. Uh, this was designed for larger screens so if I resize um, I wrote here resize browser to view experience. So we're going to recreate this composition here. Uh, these images were from unsplash.com uh, so let's get started. So I'll go into Adobe Muse and here I have the site and I'll go to file new site and for the max page width I'll set it to 1600 and then I'll click OK. And then I'll double click on the home page. So the first thing I'm going to do here is bring in the composition widget. So I'll go to object and I'll go to insert widget, select composition and I'll click blank. So I'll create a blank composition. Then I'll click once to place into Adobe Muse. So if you've seen the car website, the first tutorial on the responsive composition, you'll kind of have an idea of what I'm working with here. Uh, so here we have the triggers, which are down here, and we have the target. So when you click on the trigger, it changes the target. So the first thing I'm going to do here is delete the third and second, second trigger so I can style this first trigger and this first target. And then when I add a new trigger or target, uh, they'll have the same styling as the first. That way I don't have to go back in and restyle the triggers and targets. So I'll go ahead and click on the target here. And I'll make sure that in the states panel, I'm on the normal state. And for the fill, I'll say none. And for the stroke, I'll set it to zero so it doesn't have a stroke. Then I'll double check my states panel and make sure I don't have any different states for the rollover, mouse down, and active states. And then let me zoom out here. And then I'll do the same for the trigger. I'll click on the trigger. I'll go to the states panel, click on normal. I'll remove the fill and I'll also remove the stroke and check my states. And here we see the active state has a gray background. So I'll click on active and I'll remove the active state as well for the fill. Okay, so we have the empty target and the empty trigger. All right, so you might have to kind of just click, hold and drag to, to find the composition, but I like to start off with everything blank. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is add an image 
to the target. So I'll click on the target, I'll go to the fill option in Adobe Muse, and I'll select add image. And here I have quite a few images of different desserts. So here I'll select this one of cookies or um, I forget, uh, macaroons, that's what they're called. And I'll say fitting, for fitting I'll say scale to fill and position in the center. So there I have the image and I'm just gonna place it all the way to the right and I'm gonna make it a bit taller, maybe 600 pixels in height. So here I'll say 600 and we'll make it a bit wider. Okay, and there we have the target with the image. Looks good. And now here for the trigger, I'll make it a bit larger and I'll add some text inside of the trigger. So here I'll select the text tool and I'll create a text box and I'll type in cookies. I'll highlight it, go to the text panel. Uh, for this, we're just using Times New Roman for the font. So I'll select Times. For the font size, I think I selected uh, 24. Maybe it was a bit larger, 36. And the spacing or the tracking, I'll set it to five and we'll align it in the center or align it to the right here. All right, and just like that, we have the word cookies, okay? And I can make the target a little bit smaller because we don't need that much space. And I'll center the word cookies inside the trigger. All right, so there we have that first trigger and I'll place it here. We can see that the word cookies goes behind the target. So we can open the composition options and here where it says uh, triggers on top, just select triggers on top and all the triggers will be above the target. So now when I place the word cookies, I'll grab this trigger and place it over the target. We can see it's above the target. All right, so that was the first trigger and target. So now I'll click on the plus symbol here to the right of the trigger. And now we have another blank trigger and I'll place it below the word cookies and just line it up so that these triggers are lined up to each other. And here I'll click on this trigger, then I'll click on the target. I'll go to the fill option and for the image, let's see, let me go back to the site so I can reference it. We have T, so I'll select the T image, which is right here, looks good. Then I'll copy the text inside of this trigger, so I'll hit Command C to copy, then Command V to paste, and I'll place that again right in the trigger here. Perfect, then I'll just uh, select it and type in T. All right, looks good. Perfect, and I'll do that again. So click the plus symbol. We have this empty trigger. Click on the target, go to fill, image, and for this, it's pancakes. So I'll select this pancakes image, and I'll copy this text, command C to copy. Click on the trigger, and paste it right in there, and I'll call this pancakes, okay? Then I'll click on the plus symbol again. So let's see here, yeah, plus, okay. Then we have pastries, and for this the image was that one. All right, so I'll hit Command V to paste, type in pastries, click on the target, go to fill for this image, and for this one we have the pastries, which are right here. Perfect, and then I'll do this one more time. Click on the trigger, click on the plus symbol, click on the trigger here, paste, and for this one, it was cakes. And I'll click on the target, go to the fill option, select the image, and we have an image of cakes. So I have it here, so I'll double click, and there we have it. So that's basically it. So now if I go to file, preview page, and browser, if I hover over any of the words, or actually we see that if I hover, the, the composition doesn't change. So we wanna go back into the composition widget, and here where it says show target, we wanna click here and say on rollover, so that when the user hovers over the words, which are the triggers, the target will change as well. Okay, looks good, and I'll preview. And there we go, if I hover over the words, the image changes, perfect. And so if I resize the browser, let's see how this looks. So if I resize for larger screens, we can see it gets cut off here on the right. I want this image to stay flush with the right side of the browser and just get larger if the browser window gets larger. So I'll go into Muse and here where we have the 1600 breakpoint, we have the page expansion buttons here. 
And rather than going inward, meaning that the page will stop once the browser window gets beyond 1600 pixels in width, I want the page to expand so the page will expand beyond the 1600 breakpoint. So now if I preview, we can see that the image stays relative to the right side of the browser. And when I resize, we have that nice responsive composition. We see the words change and I don't want the words to be responsive. So I'll just select on all the triggers or click on all the triggers by holding down shift. And in the resize option, I'll say none. So I don't want the words to kind of sm get squished so that the letters go below other letters. I just want it to move a little bit to the left when the browser resizes. So I'll preview. And there we go. So right up until this point, it looks really nice. And maybe around here, which is the, um, it's 1148. So maybe around the 1024 breakpoint, I might add a breakpoint and just maybe move these words a little bit to the left and just kind of change the layout a bit there. But looks really good. The user can hover over the words and change the images. So we notice on this website, we have a bit of a fade effect. For the first example, I don't have a fade effect. They just hover and um, the image changes. So we can change those options in the composition widget. So I'll click on the composition. I'll select it here. And here we can see for the transition, we have it set to fading. If I didn't want any fading, I would just set the transition speed to zero. So the user will hover and it'll just immediately change the image just like that. I kind of like that effect. Looks good. If you did want fading, you could just set the transition speed. Here I'll set it to 0.7 and I'll preview. And we have a bit of a fading to the images. You could also do horizontal or vertical. That might look a little bit strange, but let's go ahead and see and I'll change the transition speed to one. It might look kind of cool actually. So when we hover, it changes the image like, like this. I kind of like that, it looks pretty cool. And you can do it vertical as well. All right, so that's it for the responsive composition. Um, I think it's a really cool type of slideshow. They just hover over the words and the image changes. Um, you can link the words to, or these triggers to an external page, internal page, or anchor point. So if I click on the trigger, I can go to the hyperlink section right up here. And here I'll just type in museforyoushop.com. And just like that, we've linked that trigger to a link as well. So we can hover, and if I click, it takes me to museforyoushop.com. All right, so that's it for this video tutorial, uh, the responsive composition. I got these images from unsplash.com. You can just go yeah, to unsplash and type in desserts, and it'll bring up a bunch of different dessert images. I selected ones with a white background. Um, so that the black text looks good over it. Um, so that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, we just used the responsive composition. And uh, yeah, it's a really useful tool. It's very powerful. And it can really elevate your web design and the way the your users experience content on your website. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. If you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you. News for you, awesome websites without code.